Today's episode is packed with big news from the world of AI and technology. First, we'll break down why OpenAI backtracked and brought old models back to ChatGPT, and what that means for users. Then we'll dive into the latest round of conflict between Sam Altman and Elon Musk, a war of words between two of the biggest figures in the AI industry that's heating up fast. After that, we'll take a look at OpenAI's new and, to put it mildly, ambitious project to create brain chips, a direct competitor to Neuralink. Stick around until the end so you don't miss a thing. OpenAI presented the launch of GPT-5 as a major step toward greatly simplifying the ChatGPT experience. The company wanted to eliminate the need for users to manually select a model. Instead, that task would be handled by a router built into GPT-5. This system, according to the developers, analyzes a question, determines which available model can handle it best, and sends the request there. In theory, it was meant to replace the long and confusing model list that Sam Altman once called one of the most frustrating parts of the interface. But reality turned out to be more complicated. After GPT-5's release, Altman was forced to announce that ChatGPT would now have three modes, Auto, Fast, and Thinking. Auto is the automatic routing mode, Fast provides quick responses focused on speed, and Thinking offers deeper, more detailed answers, but at a slightly slower pace. The thinking mode comes with a limit of 3,000 messages per week, with the option for additional capacity. This move shows that OpenAI hasn't abandoned the idea of giving users control, even if it goes against the original concept of fully automated selection. Another important change was the return of legacy models to chat GPT. GPT-4.0, GPT-4.1, and O3, which had been removed just a week earlier, were made available again to subscribers. GPT-4.0 was put back into the default list, while the others can be enabled in settings. This reversal came after strong community backlash. Many users admitted they had grown accustomed to the unique response styles of certain models, and losing them felt like a personal loss. Altman even acknowledged that in the future, the company would give advance notice before taking such steps, especially when it comes to GPT-4.0. However, contrary to OpenAI's plans, the model list in ChatGPT hasn't gotten simpler. It's become even more complicated. Instead of a single universal GPT-5, there are now multiple modes, plus additional models that can be added or removed manually. This runs counter to the idea of a one-click solution. On top of that, GPT-5's first days were marked by technical issues. The router often made poor choices early on, leading some users to feel the responses were worse than previous versions. This prompted Altman to explain the situation in a live AMA on Reddit, while ChatGPT VP Nick Turley admitted on social media that not everything works on the first try, but the team is quick to make adjustments. In reality, routing is more complex than it sounds. The model has to decide in fractions of a second whether the best approach is a short, quick answer or a long, detailed one, whether to be creative or stick to dry facts. It also has to match the personality of the model to the user's preferences. Some people like light humor, others want a strict and academic tone, and still others prefer a debating or provocative style. Emotional attachment to AI is a relatively new phenomenon, but it's already showing up. One example. In San Francisco, hundreds of people gathered for a symbolic funeral for Anthropic's retired Claude III sonnet model. For many, AI has become more than just a tool, and losing a familiar conversation partner can feel personal. In some cases, there are even reports of people developing unhealthy dependencies on chatbot interactions. Against this backdrop, OpenAI understands that improving the technical side alone isn't enough. The company needs to account for users' personal habits communication styles, and emotional comfort. That's likely why in the near future, it plans to focus on deep customization for GPT-5, so each user can tune the model to their liking. And judging by how this story is unfolding, the dream of a single universal AI remains just that, a dream, while the reality is a complex ecosystem of models, modes, and settings where the user still has to make choices. A heated clash has erupted on X between Elon Musk and Sam Altman, quickly spilling beyond a simple disagreement and turning into a public spectacle featuring artificial intelligence. The spark came from a complaint by Musk, who claimed that in the App Store, only OpenAI's app could take the top spot in its category, 
something he argued was unfair competition. He even threatened to take the matter to court. Altman fired back, accusing Musk of a much bigger offense, allegedly tweaking X's algorithms so that his own posts would be shown to the largest possible audience. Musk, in his usual fashion, countered by pointing out that Altman's latest post had racked up 3 million views, far more than many of Musk's own posts. That's when Grok, the AI from Musk's own company XAI, jumped into the fray. In a twist, the AI sided with Altman, stating that Musk was wrong. In 2025, the top spot in the App Store category in question had also gone to DeepSeek and Perplexity, not just OpenAI. Grok went further, confirming that X's algorithms had indeed been adjusted in Musk's favor, summing it up with the short remark, hypocrisy on display. X users quickly turned the exchange into a meme, joking that Musk pays Altman $200 a month for a ChatGPT Pro subscription, and that Altman cleverly uses GPT-5 Pro to craft prompts so tricky and complex that the AI can't get away with a short reply and is forced to deliver long, detailed answers. In the end, a dispute over app rankings morphed into a tongue-in-cheek debate over how AI has become a new player in online feuds, even stepping into battles between billionaires. Sam Altman, the head of OpenAI, is preparing to launch a new high-tech startup that could become one of the most talked-about projects in the field of brain-computer interfaces in recent years. According to the Financial Times, the company, called Merge Labs, will focus on developing brain implants aimed at merging human intelligence with the capabilities of artificial intelligence. In essence, it's an attempt to create technology that can directly connect the brain to a computer, making interaction with AI as natural and seamless as possible. The project has already stirred excitement in the tech world, as it directly overlaps with the work of Elon Musk's Neuralink, a company that for several years has been advancing the idea of implanting chips in the brain to restore lost functions and enhance human capabilities. Merge Labs is looking to raise $250 million in funding, with most of the capital expected to come from OpenAI itself. Altman will co-found the company with Alex Blaina, CEO of the startup world. This firm is known for developing eye-scanning technology for creating anonymous digital identification, which has already been applied in cryptocurrency and blockchain projects. Interestingly, despite Altman's deep involvement in Merge Labs, he will not be investing his own money. Funding will come from institutional and corporate investors. For Neuralink, the project represents a serious challenge. Musk recently told investors that his goal is to implant chips into 20,000 people annually by 2031. If successful, the company could generate around $1 billion in annual revenue. Musk has also been promoting the idea that neurochips will not only help treat severe neurological conditions, but also open a new level of interaction with digital technology. The rivalry between Altman and Musk goes back years. They once co-founded OpenAI together, but in 2018, Musk left the organization, citing strategic disagreements. In 2023, he launched his own AI startup, XAI, and in 2025 filed a lawsuit against OpenAI in an attempt to block its transition from a nonprofit to a for-profit entity. Now their competition is expanding beyond artificial intelligence into the new frontier of brain-computer connection connection, a field that could dramatically reshape humanity's future. If Merge Labs succeeds, the world could enter an era where the line between biological and artificial intelligence begins to blur, and the battle between these two billionaires will determine who leads the race for humanity's future. Abacus AI has rolled out a major update to its deep agent system, redefining what automation can do. In the past, you could create a single virtual assistant for one specific task. Now, Deep Agent can spawn new agents on the fly, connect them to various services, automatically discover new systems, and make them work together, all from a simple text prompt. These aren't pre-built templates or scripts, but dynamically generated assistants that adapt to the job. No coding is required. Just describe the goal, and Deep Agent will set up the integrations, launch the process, and keep it running without constant oversight. The key innovation is support for the MCP protocol, which makes it possible to link systems that normally can't talk to each other. Different AI models and platforms can now exchange data within a single process, with agents ensuring that the flow is correct and uninterrupted. In one workspace, you have access to both the LLM chat and Deep Agent. You can pick a ready-made idea right away, say building a CRM or generating a sales chart with specific parameters. 
Everything is created from a description, from axis labels and shadow lines to the year and price range. And making changes is just as easy. One text command does the job. The possibilities go far beyond charts. Deep Agent can produce a one-page PDF flyer, ask about the purpose and audience, then offer a design you can tweak, whether it's colors or content. And that's just the beginning. Now multiple agents can work in a chain, passing tasks between each other. Examples include syncing tasks in Notion, running a fully automated social media manager, scheduling Google Meet calls with calendar checks and invites, or integrating Jira with Slack. No manual setup needed. If tools change, say switching from Slack to Teams, the system reconfigures itself automatically. MCP support means it can connect to newly compatible systems as soon as they appear. The process starts with a prompt, sometimes followed by clarifying questions. Deep Agent then creates the agents, assigns tasks, and kicks off the workflow. You can check in at any time and make adjustments instantly. This approach covers marketing, analytics, business process management, and integrations. Everything is described in terms of goals, not technical steps. And because agents are created on demand, they can adapt as needs evolve. The real shift is moving from tool-based work to instruction-based results. Marketing teams can produce and distribute materials without bouncing between design, analytics, and scheduling tools. Operations teams can get reports without handling raw data. Developers can set up integrations without writing a single line of bridge code. Any update takes seconds. Deep Agent is no longer just an automation platform. It's an automation generator that can design, build, and maintain entire networks of assistance based on a single request. This almost eliminates the barrier to setting up complex processes and makes automation flexible, dynamic, and ready for the future. Firecrawl has introduced a new open source tool called OpenLovable, promising to change the way websites and prototypes are created. With it, you can turn any existing website into a fully functional, editable clone in just minutes. All it takes is pasting a link, and the AI will generate an exact copy of the page, ready to serve as the foundation for your project. From there, you can immediately start adding features, changing the design, integrating services, and testing ideas without lengthy prep work. Open Lovable is built on cutting-edge technologies, Grok, E2B, and Firecrawl. This combination ensures instant performance. You enter a URL, and in seconds you get a ready-to-use React app with a full set of files, code, and structure that can be adapted to any task. The process is fully automated. No complex integrations, time-consuming setups, or manual coding required. This opens up major opportunities for developers, designers, and startups. Building an MVP or prototype no longer takes weeks of team effort. Just a couple of minutes to spin up a test version and jump straight into validating ideas. This approach helps launch projects faster, save resources, and focus on functionality instead of technical grunt work. OpenLovable is the kind of tool that can turn ideas into a working product almost instantly.